Hi, I'm Linda and this video is to help explain what chemotherapy is and what can happen during a course of chemotherapy. This video is for people who are about to undertake chemotherapy and is designed to support the information given to you by your care team. It is also a useful tool for family and friends to gain a greater understanding of your treatment. Embarking on a course of chemotherapy can be a stressful time and learning all you can about your treatment will help manage any anxieties which may arise. There is a lot of information in this video and we encourage you to watch some or all of it more than once. So my first thoughts when I was told I was going to have chemotherapy was very daunting and uh, very scary but I was quite excited to, to know that I can actually fight this disease so I was happy to go ahead with it. To understand how chemotherapy works, it is important to understand how cells in your body are made. Your bone marrow produces three types of blood cells. White blood cells, red blood cells and platelets. White blood cells help fight infection. Red blood cells carry oxygen and platelets help clot your blood. Normally these cells grow and divide in a regular and controlled way. Cancer cells are abnormal. They form and then continue to grow without control. Chemotherapy destroys cancer cells, thereby preventing their growth and spread. Unfortunately, chemotherapy also destroys healthy cells. I'll explain more about the side effects later in this video. Chemotherapy treatments are given in hospital, in a ward or day treatment area. Chemotherapy is usually given through the vein known as intravenous or in tablet form. Occasionally, it is given under the skin as an injection. You will be asked to wait for a short time after the chemotherapy has been delivered so that the nurse can monitor your health. Passing the time is not a problem. I, uh, even when I was in here from 8.30 till 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I would read the paper. Uh, there'd be other patients that I'd have a chat to. I would listen to music. Um, I would read a book. I would um, have a bit of a laugh with the nurses, uh, but most of the time I sat there quietly. I wasn't um, interested in talking or relaying much to anybody else. Chemotherapy is effective at destroying rapidly growing cancer cells, but unfortunately it also affects normal cells that grow rapidly. It is the damage to rapidly growing normal cells that can result in the side effects people experience. Healthy cells in certain parts of the body are especially sensitive to chemotherapy drugs, making some symptoms more common. For example, loss of healthy cells in your bone marrow can cause you to develop an infection, and loss of healthy cells in the digestive system can cause you to feel nausea. It's important to understand that each person reacts differently to chemotherapy. Some patients may experience a variety of symptoms, whilst others will have very few side effects, or none at all. No, I think I've been really lucky in terms of the level of um, side effects that I've had. I've been able to manage it quite comfortably with the medications that they've given me as well. I've been on it now for five months, and it seems to be working, and I've had no side effects. Because chemotherapy reduces the ability for bone marrow to produce healthy cells at its usual capacity, you will need to have regular blood tests to monitor the amount of red cells, white cells and platelets your bone marrow is producing. This is called checking your blood counts. After each chemotherapy treatment, your healthy cells will typically reduce and then recover before your next treatment is due. Until the cells recover, there are a number of side effects you will need to be aware of. I'll go through each of these symptoms and the precautions you can take, as well as treatments that can help alleviate symptoms. You should always advise your medical team of any symptoms that arise. Throughout your chemotherapy, your body may not be producing enough white blood cells, which are the cells that fight infection. This can cause symptoms such as a temperature over 38, a cough, particularly if it is producing yellow or green sputum, pain or burning when you pass urine, abdominal cramping or flu-like symptoms. Your resistance to infection is usually at its lowest seven to 14 days after chemotherapy. 
The number of your white blood cells will then steadily increase and usually returns to normal before your next cycle of chemotherapy is due. Check your temperature each day. If your temperature is 38 degrees or above, you need to report this straight away to your oncology doctor or nurse for instruction on what action to take. If you cannot make contact with your doctor or nurse, then you should attend a hospital emergency department as soon as possible. Ensure you tell staff you have had chemotherapy and are at a high risk of infection. There are some things you can do that will help minimise the risk of symptoms. Avoid contact with people who are obviously unwell and be attentive to hand washing. Wear gloves when doing activities such as gardening. Chemotherapy also reduces the healthy red blood cells in your body, which can result in anemia and tiredness. Tiredness is a very common side effect. It tends to be worse at the start of chemotherapy and generally lasts for about 10 days, improving prior to your next treatment. Some people also feel out of breath when anemic. Report any changes to your doctor. Planning your activities with rest periods is an important strategy, but you may be surprised to learn that exercise is also known to help with improving the symptoms of fatigue. If you are having problems, speak with your nurse who will be able to suggest strategies and provide more information about this. Chemotherapy can also reduce the amount of platelets your body produces. This may make you more susceptible to bleeding. If you notice unusual bruising or bleeding, such as nosebleeds, bleeding when you use the toilet or gum bleeding, this should be reported to your doctor or nurse. If your doctor is concerned about your blood levels, the chemotherapy may be delayed or the dose reduced or both. This is nothing to worry about and is a standard way of managing blood level counts and your chemotherapy treatment. Some chemotherapy drugs can make you feel sick. Not everyone gets sick, but if this does happen to you, there are effective treatments to prevent and control sickness. Sometimes, even after taking medication, nausea can remain, but there are some things you can do to help with this. This includes taking your anti-sickness medications as directed. It also helps to eat small amounts regularly rather than three large meals. Ginger flavoured teas and drinks can also offer nausea relief. Significant weight loss should be reported to your treatment team. I may feel a little off colour sometimes, but not all the time, but sometimes I don't feel so well. They give you lots of um, medication for nausea, so I, I've been really lucky. I haven't had any um, vomiting or anything like that. Keeping nausea well controlled is important so that you can maintain adequate oral food and fluids. If you do continue to have ongoing symptoms, you should report them to your nurse or doctor. There may well be another anti-sickness drug that will be more suitable for you and it may also be helpful to see the dietitian for advice about appropriate foods. Chemotherapy can affect the cells lining the mouth, which can lead to soreness and sometimes mouth ulcers. To reduce the risk of complications, you should use mouthwash four times daily, after meals and again before bed. An affordable mouthwash mix of half a teaspoon of salt in a glass of tepid water is regarded as adequate. If you prefer a commercial brand mouthwash, ensure that it is not alcohol based. Use a soft toothbrush. If your gums are bleeding, avoid using dental floss until the bleeding settles. It is recommended that you have a dental check and any necessary work done before you commence your chemotherapy. Make sure you advise your dentist about your chemotherapy treatment. Diarrhoea and constipation are other common side effects you can experience during chemotherapy. It is important to understand whether the diarrhoea is due to the chemotherapy rather than a gastrointestinal infection. So any diarrhoea should be reported to your nurse or doctor. They can also prescribe medication to help. On the other hand, some of the anti-sickness drugs may cause constipation. This also should be reported as it can sometimes be quite severe. A high fibre diet, plenty of fluids and physical activity will help prevent constipation. Your nurse or doctor will advise of measures to take to relieve constipation. Throughout therapy, 
people can experience a number of side effects to their hair, skin and nails. Skin dryness is one side effect and it helps if you use an unperfumed skin lotion regularly. Some chemotherapy drugs also cause skin rashes. Notify your healthcare team if a rash develops. Depending on the drugs you are on, you may be at an increased risk of sunburn, so it is important to be diligent regarding skin protection. Avoid midday sun, wear a sun hat when outside and use sunscreen. Hair loss is another side effect of chemotherapy. Not everyone experiences hair loss, but it can be confronting when it happens. Ask your nurse or doctor how your chemotherapy may affect you. I had beautiful um, shoulder length hair and to see it dropping in the shower was, was very horrible. Um, but I decided earlier on I wasn't going to um, wear a wig, so I went on to wearing scarves. Um, and people got used to seeing me without anything on my head and I think my confidence in that respect helped. Yeah, look, it was a bit shocking, I suppose, but um, it's just part of the process and I know it will come back because in between the treatments I have had some regrowth, so it, it'll come back fairly quickly. And you just wear a cool turban. Hair loss usually happens two to four weeks into your treatment, but this also varies between patients. You will be provided with information about wig products and headwear accessories. During chemotherapy, you should be gentle and kind to your hair. It helps to use a pH neutral shampoo and a soft hairbrush or wide toothed comb. And use the cool selection on your hair dryer. You should also avoid chemical hair colouring treatments as well as electrical curlers and hair straighteners. For some types of chemotherapy, a treatment called scalp cooling can help reduce hair loss. Your doctor will advise you if your chemotherapy is suited to this treatment. Some chemotherapy drugs can cause alterations to feeling in your hands and feet. Your healthcare team will advise you if you're on one of these agents. Pins and needle sensation, discomfort, burning or shooting sensations are examples of these possible side effects. It is particularly important to notify your specialist doctor or nurse if you start to experience any of these symptoms, as you may need to reduce your chemotherapy dose. If you do experience loss of feeling in your hands and feet, it's important to take extra care when touching hot and cold surfaces and objects, and always wear footwear outside to protect your feet. A number of chemotherapy drugs can cause allergic reactions during the infusion. These can include mild reactions such as facial flushing to shortness of breath, chest tightness and a feeling of facial or body heat, itching, development of rash or sudden body pain or discomfort. If you have any of these symptoms during your infusion, let staff know immediately. Nursing staff are very experienced at managing these reactions. A brief delay in your infusion and some extra medication such as antihistamines may be all that's needed before restarting your treatment. Chemotherapy treatment also affects your reproductive cells and can bring about early menopause. If you do want to have a family in the future, talk to your doctor before you start chemotherapy about fertility options. During chemotherapy, both male and female patients can still be fertile. It is very important not to conceive during chemotherapy. It is essential that contraception precautions are taken. If your blood counts are satisfactory, you can engage in sexual activity. You will need to wear condoms for at least a week after chemotherapy. This is to protect your partner from chemotherapy products. Your nurse will let you know how long after your treatment you will need to take precautions. Some patients experience decreased libido during chemotherapy. This can be due to a variety of reasons, tiredness and stress resulting from the challenges being faced, and for some people, anxiety about changes in body image. For some male patients, impotency is a problem, which can be caused by surgical procedures and other treatments. Finding other ways to express intimacy is important. 
Suggestions include ensuring that you have enough private time together, engaging in shared interests, being aware to show other expressions of physical affection and talking openly about your emotions. If you are struggling in these areas, your doctor or oncology nurse are comfortable answering your questions, providing more information and making referrals to appropriate advisors. Remember many patients experience only minor side effects. This video is to make you aware of what might occur and to help you know when to contact a member of your healthcare team. Oh, my advice to any cancer patient would be to, to, to get on and try and lead as normal a life as possible. It's not as bad as it, well, it sounds and you've just got to have a, a good mind towards it and just think positive, lots of positive actually. Everyone has their own journey and everyone needs to manage it the best way they can. I've found making sure I get enough sleep, even if that means being in bed for 12 hours a day, which I have done, has really helped. Um, I've cut back on my workload, I've cut back on extraneous activities that I can put off for a few months while I go through this. Um, trying to eat food even when you don't feel like eating, trying to make sure that you keep eating and asking as many questions as you possibly can of the people that are looking after you. Just make sure you know what you're dealing with as best you can. We want you to lead as normal a life as possible. You're always welcome to ask your cancer nurse for any information during your treatment. And remember, we have trained oncology nurses 24 seven. Just call at any time, day or night. Someone will always be available to help you. I hope that you've found this information valuable.